Hello all, it's been a while. Um, <laughs> I thought I'd best do a video because um, you might think I'm dead. Um, <laughs> got coronavirus or something, but uh, I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, thought, yeah, I've got a couple of bits and pieces to maybe catch up on. Um, not been able to do much brewing on the brew tools. The last brew that I did was the uh, the Fuller's London Porter clone. Um, I've had a bit of a rough time. I nearly dislocated my shoulder uh, out in the woods uh, trying to get my daughter across the stream. But you know, the amount of rain it's put down is so slippy. I went and I just kind of popped it out. So fortunately, it did pop back in um, like kind of straight away. Or, or otherwise, it could have been could have been worse. Um, so that's partially why I've not been brewing. Uh, because you may recall from my previous videos, I've got to lift up the, the malt pipe and up until now I've, I've, I would have had no chance. I would have probably just popped it back out. <clears throat> so I'm going to try and you know, get that back into back into gear. I don't know what that is. Um, <clears throat> uh, and then I had flu as well. So it was just man flu. It weren't coronavirus. And at least I don't think it was. It might have been, I guess. Um, it, it definitely felt a bit different to the previous times that I'd flew, uh, but who knows? Uh, I'm, I'm still here, so uh, you know, happy days. One second, let me get a beer. One user, one user commented, and I, I apologise, I, I forgot the name. Um, who thought it would be a good idea to kind of show some of the finished beers? Now, I don't tend to do it. I, I just tend to kind of drink them uh, <laughs> rather than doing reviews and things, but. I thought whilst I've got a bit left, I'll 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 kind of do a bit of a show and tell kind of thing. So I'm just trying not to spill it actually. It's a nice tulip glass. So apologies for all the reflections. I'm not sure my glasses. Uh, there's a great big yellow thing in the sky. I'm not quite sure what it is, but it's uh, shining right in my eyes. I've not seen it for a while. So as you can hopefully tell, so it's a really nice kind of copper colour. So yeah, so this was the director's, this was my second brew uh, on the brew tools, on the B80. Um, I feel like, if I remember rightly, I ended up with slightly too much volume. But to be honest, it doesn't really seem to have affected the overall beer. I thought it might be a little bit weak, a little bit thin, but it's fine. It's really, it's really, really, you know, a rather quaffable bitter. Um, yeah, you've got the kind of, you know, the roasting oats. You've got a slight bitterness, I think, from the black malt that I put in there. I think there's black malt in there. Might be wrong. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just it's just a really drinkable beer. Um, the one thing I probably would say, and, and maybe this is where it is a little bit thin, is maybe not quite as much body. Um, that I feel like it should have, if I remember rightly. But I will say, I've had that. I mean, I've been drinking directors for years, Curry's directors, since I was like 16 or something, going to the pub when I shouldn't have been. Um, you know, the only the only lad that was uh, drinking directors, you know, craft ales, there wasn't much of it back then. Um, everyone else was on Fosters and Carlin, so shame on you lot. Look who's laughing now. So, yeah, I mean, I've had directors on keg on cask uh, from the pubs uh, I've, there is a kit out there as well which is rather good um, I recommend you check it out if you're not familiar with directors I want to give it a go um, where it's all the hassle of all grain brewing uh, and obviously I've, I've now done the clone um, and I have to say that this is pretty pretty similar you know it's not it's not a million miles away but it wasn't a perfect brew day either so, um, you know, kind of bear that in mind, but it, it's, it's very good, it's very good. Definitely better than the kit, and the kit's good. So that's kind of saying something. So, lovely kind of crystal clear. Um, I feel like it should be a little bit darker, if I remember rightly. Uh, it's been a while since I've had it on the cask, but um, I feel like it should be a little bit darker rather than a copper colour, a little bit more kind of nutty brown, but um, it, yeah. A testament to the fact that I've, uh, you know, I've hardly got any left. So you know, two kind of uh, corny kegs have, have gone pretty much. This is the, this is the dregs. Excuse me. Um, yeah. So there you go. There's beer number one. So whilst we're uh, waiting to get onto the porter, and I'll show you that as well. Um, you may recall in one of my, I think it was the last kind of summary video that I did. I'm not sure. Uh, that I said I split one of the. Um, silicon leg protectors 
on the boot tools, so on the malt basket. And I managed to find it, it took me a while, it was kind of tucked away, but I don't know if you can see that. So it's kind of just split down the side, it was, it's a bit odd really. You can see that. Um, so at the time, you couldn't actually get hold of these separately. So either the new, or either this version, the old version basically, that's the old version, or the newer version, now you can now. Uh, they're available on at least the Brutals website. Um, so, but yeah, at the time that I split it, I reached out to them. I couldn't buy replacements, um, so they just sent me some. Just say, yeah, just sent me a replacement, and these are the newer ones as well. So again, it's been a while since I've talked about Brutals customer service, but you know, they're just worlds apart from anyone else. Like you know, they just send send stuff out uh, when they can realise, I guess, that they've dropped the ball. You know, it might not have been. Uh, produced right, the specifications might not have been, you know, correct or whatever. Uh, they acknowledge that, and you know, the the they're kind of treating the customers fairly, which is really good to see. Now you can kind of see from that that is a big chunk of silicon. Oh, the sun's going now, and that's the old one. So at least kind of twice as thick. So I'm looking to yeah get them on on the next brew, and. Uh, yeah, maybe just keep these, maybe not that one, but the other ones just as, as spurs, just in case. So yeah, there you go. They are available to, to purchase. I think they were 3 99 maybe in euros uh, for, for three, so not not particularly expensive. Just throwing it up for. Um, so yeah, there you go. So what else have I been up to? Um, Kind of whilst I've been out of action on the brewing, all grain brewing side of things, I decided to get a kit beer. A, interestingly, a lager. Um, so it's a mangrove, mangrove Jack's Pilsner. So I was like, oh, that's a bit unusual. I, you know, the kits are kind of geared towards you know people that haven't got dedicated systems to to kind of you know, in the case of a lager, ferment at lower temperatures. You know, it's used the fermentation at a ambient temperature so that's a bit weird so i looked into it and um it comes with a a yeast and i, I think it's m54 don't quote me on that um that's specially kind of designed to ferment lagers at ambient room temperature without the associated off flavors and extended lagering periods um so i thought that was quite interesting and you know, I mean, I'm partial to a bit of lager occasionally. You know, just kind of mix it up a bit. Um, and I've got kind of porters, bitters. Uh, I've got a barley wine on the kegerator at the minute, which is just conditioning, like I say. So for, um, yeah, I think that's for about three months now. It's got at least another three months to go before it's kind of ready to start drinking properly. Um, and the other keg's taken up by a cider that I've had, a turbo cider that I've had in there for about 18 months. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to kind of yeah have a bit of a change. So interestingly, I'll probably want to even bother mentioning that, but um, it's good to know though. You know, if you're uh, kind of you know new to home brewing or wasn't aware of that, it's an easy lager to make, I guess. If indeed the um, yeah the advertising is true. Uh, but the next all grain that I'm going to do is actually going to be a I think it's a bark. It's a bark. The bark from the Bible. Um, and I'm going to do this as an experiment, a little experiment. So I'm going to do kind of a, it's going to be a double batch in the B80 Pro. Um, so again, you know, 20, 22 liters in two fermenters a piece. And then I do have a lager in fridge, but obviously only room for one. Uh, oops, knocking the, knocking the thing in. So I'm going to do one with a safe ale lager yeast in the fermentation fridge and i'm going to do one at room temperature with a mangrove jacks a lager yeast that uh, i think it's a californian ale uh, california lager yeast i think it is uh, and i'm going to see what the difference is um, there may not be one but if there isn't one <laughs> then i can do a lot more lagers because yeah especially now when you can you know you're you're brewing on the b80 you can do like you know, get you know two, maybe even three corner kegs worth of, of beer. And like I say, if you've only got room in the you know the library fridge for, for one of those fermentation vessels, then this is going to be really really useful. Um, 
so I'm definitely going to try it and see how it turns out. Uh, now the box probably got a bit more kind of multi flavor in it than a kind of crisp, uh, you know, like something like a Czech Pilsner, but um, I'm going to give it a go anyway because I've got the ingredients for it. So I'm going to see what that turns out like and I'll let you know. Anything else? Porter, one second. Let me just top her up. Look at that. Oh no, I'm overflowing. I've overflowed. Oh Jesus. Oh, amateur. There you go. There's the porter. And at first glance, it looks black as day, but hopefully we can get a bit of light through while the uh, sun shines through the window. Nice creamy head as well. You can kind of see that. It's a really dark brown. So a lot of a lot of kind of brown malt length into it, uh, as you may recall. Very dark brown, but brown it is and not black. Uh, and a lot of chocolate malt as well. And <laughs> I tell you what, <laughs> you can smell chocolate, and you may have, you may have, may not have noticed that I'm not BJ, BJCP uh, approved. Uh, <laughs> But I can smell chocolate all over that, and yeah, you can definitely taste chocolate. Very, very... It, if I'm honest, it, then this is a really nice, a really nice beer. If I'm honest, I think it's a little bit too chocolatey. Um, I think it overpowers some, some of the other kind of roasty, you know, roasty malt flavors that are in there. And they are in there, but. I think they're just a bit kind of overshadowed by the uh, the, the, the chocolate force, um, which is a little bit of a shame, really, because um, I've still got another fermentation vessel um, of this ready to go on keg. Um, so, yeah, I've got a corner keg that's nearly empty. Um, but uh, it, it is good. It, it is good. I'm not going to lie. It's good. It's very good. It's just a little bit too... Chocolate. <laughs> it's not that sessionable, so you could probably have maybe two, three pints of this. I mean, that's just a tulip glass, but uh, what's that? Maybe three thirty, three fifty, something like that. Uh, so yeah, you could probably you could probably have about three pints of that, and then be a bit kind of you know a, bit, a little bit sick of it. I would I would have thought it's not that sessionable, but very nice beer nonetheless. Um, you know, especially if you want to kind of, you know, jump from a couple of different beers, you know, mixing your beers, oh God, God forbid. <laughs> but, you know, maybe have a couple of like bitters, then have a couple of these, then whatever. Well, very nice it is. Not sure if that's showing up or not, but. Lovely, it's a lovely beer. Uh, I'd recommend you give it a go, maybe just do one batch, yeah. So I think that's it for now. Um, I thought it was worth doing a quick catch up. I'm probably waffled on for way too long. I'm already at eight minutes and this is my second segment. So um, yeah, hopefully I can catch up soon with you and do another Brew Tools B80 Pro uh, Brew Day video. Um, once my shoulder's sorted, so I'm not, it's, it's not too bad at the minute. I'm hoping next kind of week, two weeks and I'll be there. Um, to do a bot, get the steam hat and condenser on there again and then uh, see how we get on so anyway, I've waffled on for way too long thank you very much for watching please do give me a like, share, subscribe very much appreciate it and I will see you guys next time bye bye yes, I know uh, we mentioned coronavirus before uh, but in all seriousness though please do take care of yourselves um, stay hygienic uh, don't catch it and uh, don't bulk buy and hoard toilet paper because I struggled to get some the other day. And if I find out that you're doing it, I'll have to call the police. <laughs> Peace out.